Good morning, y'all. It is a great day to be thankful. I have my daughter down for a nap. I made cookies, and now I really, really wanna do a Valentine's Day egg um, packing video. And honestly, I just wanna talk about eggs, because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to eggs. For example, did you know that your eggs at the store can be up to six months old when you're getting them? So, let's dive into that. Also, do you like my cute plant? Ah! I don't know if anybody has seen like Hayao Miyazaki movies, but I got these cute little, like, uh, they're called forest spirits from the movie and they're so cute. And I put these mushrooms from Hobby Lobby on toothpicks and I suck them in my plant. And this is my little plant that I'm gonna get him out of the way. Um, oh, and I made cookies, which I don't know if anybody knows like baking. But these cookies went in the same oven, and then these ones, they're, they're good, they're flat, but they're, you know, they're chewy. And they break apart easily. But these ones, if you can hear, are same oven, same recipe. These were on the lower rack, these were on the upper rack. And these have more cookies, so I put the cookies with more dough on it. Oh, these are really good on the upper rack, ones with less on the lower rack, because I thought, I you know, like even out cooking time. And I just don't get it. I don't get it, so let me know if you guys have any baking tips, because I'm just learning everything as I go along, quite frankly. Um, so I'm packing these eggs for my good friend, Penny, and I've known Penny since I was in high school. She's actually my friend's mom. Um, and she buys eggs from me like religiously and I'm so thankful Penny if you see this for buying. But what we're gonna do today is just, oh, let me put these here where they're a little safer. We're gonna pack them for her. We're gonna clean them and uh, get going on that. These are my supplies. I really personally love like buying fun like egg cartons and you're more likely to reuse them because they're cute. That's <laughs> what I find. Everybody that like, buys my eggs has, has brought back cartons um, for the most part, unless they're kind of just like a, you know, in passing, so to speak, buying eggs. Uh, but I have a lot of fun with that because people are like, oh, sure, I will reuse your egg cartons. First things first, um, let's wash the eggs. I personally don't wash any eggs until I get ready to sell them um, because there's a natural protective layer um, that preserves the egg, and that's called Bloom. And what Bloom does is, well, it preserves the egg. And if you keep the Bloom on your egg, you don't have to wash it. And you can store it on the counter for, uh, I think, four to six weeks. I think longer, genuinely. Let me see. I have these cute little egg packing cards that I'll show you in a minute. Um, unwashed eggs last about two months in the refrigerator. I'm sorry, washed, okay. Let's just jump right into this. I put these in every single um, carton of eggs that I sell and it's just for, you know, whoever's buying egg to know how to store and to handle them and all that good stuff. Um, but what it says is washed eggs last about two months in the refrigerator, unwashed eggs last about two weeks on the counter and about three months in the refrigerator. So I don't have my eggs on the counter for that long um, unwashed because they, one, are being used really fast and I'm selling them really fast. The second I get eggs, um, I message my gals, hey, do you want eggs? I'm like, yeah, let's give me eggs. So they're only on the counter for maybe a couple days at least um, unwashed. And I, I don't wash them be, you know, because I want that bloom and because I want to keep them longer and then they go to the house and they get put in the fridge or you know whatever you have it. If the eggs are clean, I just won't wash them at all. Um, but if they look like uh, they look like this, I just take a wet towel and I wash them up. Um, so this has kind of all the instructions about farm fresh eggs and how to store and keep them. Um, and that's just kind of what I go by. So I have these super cute pink, they're already stamped. Um, Stamp's kind of blurry on here, but you know, whatever. I have fun, fun stamps that I put on my eggs, so you know it's from me. 
these ones I bought and they have, they already are stamped, but they're not with my stamp, but they're just farm fresh, um, which is good enough. You know, it's, it's cute. So in lieu of Valentine's Day, I really wanted to do pink and white. Um, one thing to know about eggs too, uh, is just where are you getting your eggs from? I personally hold the belief that if you can get them from any local farm or homestead or backyard chicken, you know, why, why not do that? You know where your eggs are coming from. You know what's going on. Um, you can ask general questions about how they're being treated. Um, and I guess while I'm at it, I store the eggs pointy side down because of the air pocket that will go up and it's just a lot easier um, to store your eggs. Well, one, it's easier to store your eggs. Two, it helps them last longer because of the air pocket in there. This one I'm not gonna wash, it looks good. Um, this is a nice white egg. She looks good too. Anyways, um, gosh, my train of thought just kind of left me there. Oh, uh, yeah, just being in touch with like where eggs and your food comes from. Um, I did read somewhere, sorry, I can't quote where I read it, but that your eggs can take up to six months from the time that they were laid to be in your kitchen when you buy them at the store. So it kind of begs the question for me, um, you know, what what's going on my eggs to get them to last that long is that something that i am consuming is that something i want to be consuming why does it take so long if chickens lay every day um which by the way chickens don't always lay every day some breeds lay quite a bit but they almost always i'm sorry every chicken whether you hear whether you hear something somewhere else it is my belief that every chicken in the winter will slow down their laying season. Um, and that's God's way of giving their bodies a break. Um, imagine women being pregnant all the time. You you need a break. I mean, you can be pregnant back to back. But anyways, um, chickens need a break. They can't lay an egg every single day of the year, every other day. Winter is great for them to have that break naturally. Naturally, they get that break. Um, because of the days being shorter um, and less sun and cooler, their bodies just slow down. And people are like, oh, well, I changed my feed because the government is um, putting things in our feed. So once I did that, my chickens started laying again. <sighs> well, duh. If you're adding a different nutrients to their diet that's different from what it was before, you know, their body is going to react to that. If you're upping the protein intake for your egg layers and you get them new feed, their body is going to react to that and it's not good. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not added heat and my chicken filet all winter. That's not good. It's just not good for your bird. It's not responsible in my opinion. And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna see this and be like, you, I'm gonna do what I want with my chickens. Fine, they're your chickens. But I'm just letting you know, it's just not good. I mean, don't you want to break? Doesn't your body want to break? And if you're that concerned about having eggs over winter, why don't you learn to preserve them? Believe it or not, eggs preserve very well. And if you can store them for up to three months in the refrigerator, unwashed eggs, three months in the refrigerator, most places, that's a good long winter season. Three months, okay? In case you didn't know, there's 12 months out of the year and there's four seasons. Divide four by three. You have four seasons. We have winter is November, December, January. I know, some places get snow in February. And then we have spring, Jan uh, uh, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Oh wait, maybe it's four months. Is my math off? Three times 12. 12 divided by four, four times three is 12. Four times three is 12, right? Uh, summer, okay, sorry, let me start over. Let me think about this. Why am I having such a hard time? I don't have my calendar in front of me, that's why. Okay, winter is November, December, January. Spring is February, March, April. Uh, summer is May, June, July. And fall is August, September, October. 
Okay, there we are. So that's 12 months out of the year. That's 12 months, four seasons. And then guess what? October, November, December, January. It's three months. If your eggs store for up to three months, why don't you store your eggs in the end of fall to get you through a good amount of the winter? And now I understand you can't just like, oh, well, I can't get a five dozen eggs right at the end of fall to get me all through winter, but you can learn to preserve them and it's fine. Just preserve your eggs. Um, I've seen a lot of people get giant jugs and use like pickling liquid or salt um, and vinegar put their eggs in there or a lime uh, powder or something. I don't know, I personally haven't done it, but I haven't needed to do it because, well, I'm in Southern California and there's only a couple weeks where my chickens are slowing down. Um, and they, they alternate. I had one hen power through this winter and she was laying eggs every other day and they were all white and I had one hen doing that. And I was like, dang girl. Uh, but she's also kind of a younger, chicken and she just felt like doing it and that was fine but I didn't change her feed I didn't force them to you know lay all winter I didn't add heat um she just had started laying that year um you know and, and am I putting these in see I got distracted now I'm not sure if I'm putting them upside down or not upside down anyway that's just my opinion give your chickens a break let them slow down over winter, figure out how to preserve your eggs. You know, there's a ton of um, resources out there for how to preserve eggs, um, how to freeze dry them. And it's really great. I mean, just just give your girls a break. So that's my opinion, um, which also leads to the question about being egg bound. Um, egg binding is what happens when a chicken can't fully pass the egg. Um, a lot of times this can happen from to my knowledge, I don't know everything about egg binding. It's still a nuanced thing for me that I'm currently learning about, but it's really good to know because you're gonna come across it at some point, maybe, maybe. Um, when there's too much, uh, I think, protein. Oh, I just squeezed it too hard and cracked. The egg up. Cedric! It's his lucky day. Where are you? Come here. Outside, take it outside. <laughs> Come on, crack it open. Okay, eat your egg. There you go, he's gonna crack it open. I love that video when people are talking about if you give a dog an egg, they just know what to do and they're so gentle with it. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take it gently, but to go find a nice little spot to eat it. Here you go. Crack it open, honey. Crack, crack, crack. There you go. He's got it. But it's not like the dog is instinctually going to go take the egg and take care of it and lay on it. Oh, no. He knows exactly what that egg is. Oh, boy. And he'll eat the shell, and it's great. Sorry. I didn't get one for you. Zeke's... We'll take the egg and um, have a hard time getting it open. So I have to crack it open for him and put it in the bowl. And he also doesn't like the shell. So um, whereas Cedric will just eat everything. <sighs> Low key, I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, egg binding? Getting egg bound? Um, I put that in there without even, did I set the, how do you get in here? Any canoodle. Uh, it, yeah, it's just a thing you're gonna run into. I would highly recommend some YouTube channels or just doing some research or reading some books about uh, uh, how to combat egg binding. Um, I personally keep my girls at about 16% protein, um, but I also, that you, you have to consider your um, conditions and habits. Are you letting your chickens out to forage? Or are you leaving them in? Are they getting grubs and protein naturally foraging for them? Or are they just getting, uh, you know, basic feed in the coop? My girls do get out. They do get things. And I, and I give them uh, all my table scraps that aren't getting composted. I give them, uh, you know, 
grub, I, I do buy grubs and I sprinkle them outside, let them scratch around. So I keep my protein intake about 16%. In the winter, I do up it from 18 to 20% um, because it's winter. And I just want them to get a little hearty and kind of chunky. Uh, but I, I don't really need to because, you know, again, I'm in Southern California, like the lowest it gets is maybe 36, if that, if that, like I can't even, yeah, no, it doesn't get that cold here. Um, I mean, maybe 32, I, I don't know. Personally, I haven't had an issue with it. Um, I don't provide heat for my chickens over winter because they are kind of hardy um, and it's not necessary for where I'm at. And it's kind of a, a fire hazard as well. People are putting heat lamps in their chicken coops um, over winter, because if it falls, depending on the kind of bedding they have, it could light on fire and then you've lost your whole flock. That's just devastating. Um, and they're animals. I, I think the the humanitarianism, humanitarianism, human, the humanity, whatever. The side of us that cares for things, um, wants to make it comfortable and we want to make it easy but what we don't realize is we're like kind of disabling our animals from their natural abilities like you don't need they just don't need all of all of that they don't need all of the heat and the blankets and the you know thing you know i i do what i can and i take good care of them you know and i keep things clean but you know i don't need to tuck my chicken in at night let's be real um, so I don't add heat and, you know, and then they cozy up together and I do layer, layer bed in the winter and they, and, uh, uh, that's good because, um, it is more insulated. Um, and I, I think it's really beneficial for somebody in like Minnesota, but you know, layer bedding, it, it is more insulated and, um, it helps with the smell as well when you're layering it instead of cleaning it out and because it is so wet for us at least um and, and in a lot of places it gets pretty wet over winter it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean everything out and then um, i'll do a cleaning video of what i do but and then you'll kind of see like oh this is not fun to do in the rain and this is not fun to do in the mud and really just not good because it's it's i want that nutrients in there to kind of um settle a bit so that I can use it in my garden. Look, he's so cute. Anyways, we'll, we'll get to a cleaning video. Um, man, these eggs are so cute. I actually really want Easter eggers. I have maybe three or four. They're not laying right now. Um, I adopted a couple from a neighbor and um, her kids had just grown up and <laughs> They had chickens and you know, she just had a lot of a billion other things to be doing than having chickens. And I was like, who can I have some? So I went over and picked a few out. Um, I took five of her chickens and they adjusted very well into my coop. Um, after I got, I rehomed my guinea hens to my aunt. The guinea hens are, uh, aren't that friendly to new newcomers, but my guinea hens at least, yours might be the friendliest you've ever met. Um, mine, on the other hand, were, were not. This egg is particularly veiny. I, I use the word veiny for lack of better words. I don't know if you can see right here. I just kind of, I don't know, let's crack it open. Maybe it's fertilized, which I feel like some of you are like, oh, it's fertilized. Why are you cracking it open? Oh, it wasn't. It was a perfectly normal egg. I was just curious, honestly perfectly normal, but at least Zeke, it's a, you know, Cedric, go outside, go outside Cedric, okay Zeke, Zeke doesn't eat these, but I will, I mean I won't, I won't eat them, but I save them, and I put them, in Cedric, I put them in my, Cedric, go lay down, and then in my compost bin, um, how many more eggs do I need, uh, five, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I just wanted to see what the egg was. See, I'm learning every day, you know? Maybe veins mean nothing. Veins, I don't really know. It's just maybe a, the way the egg was, who knows. Anyways, Easter egg or say like blue, green, olive, uh, teal, whatever. I mean, all these pretty colored eggs. And um, my guinea hens were kind of not very welcoming. 
um, to my chickens, but they're doing great at my aunt's house. They've got acres and acres and acres and no neighbor dogs. Um, and she has a livestock guardian, so they're having a ton of fun with the guinea hens. Um, but I also have two roosters. Um, one rooster survived. I got to a point where I was gonna <laughs> harvest all of my roosters. I had two very mean ones that are so special, they got a name, Gerald and Edward. Edward is a dark gray silky, and unfortunately for him, he was just a jerk. And silkies, by nature, are supposed to be nicer, um, but not this one. Nope, he was a jerk. He would, he would attack me all the time, which is stupid because I handled him all the time. But whatever, they just have their animals. They have their own personalities and likeness and whatever. He just was the way he was. Um, and I have a two-year-old, so that was kind of hard. When I go out to do chores, I just get freaking bombed by this bird. He just did not like me at all. I'm like, I'm feeding you, whatever. Um, Edward was a good, Edward was a good one. He took good care of the girls until he didn't and he just stopped being a yummy, protective, you know, father rooster. So I made, uh, and then I had hatched out a few chickens that were fully grown now and they were roosters. So I just had too many roosters and it was time. It was time so I had about six that I took to the butcher and one of them I named after my friend because he was so dramatic and my friend was an actor so I just was like oh I'm naming you I'm so bummed because my camera stopped cameraing and I lost like a lot of footage but it's fine because you get the idea we packed our eggs for Penny and um, <sighs> And I'll have to make some storage space on my phone by deleting all of the other videos that I've taken on this phone. So anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting my channel. Um, please comment. I want to get to know you. I want to know who's watching. Let me know what you're thankful for today. And if you have any questions about chickens or any input, I love to learn. And I want to know if there's any insight or facts that I can now know about chickens. So thanks again for watching and have a blessed day. Mwah.